So I don't know about you guys, but I'm not going on holiday this year because I've just spent all my money on this, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And maybe you're balling and you can buy 10 of these tomorrow. Either way, you're going to want to get the most from your brand new iPhone 14. And that's exactly why I'm making this video for you. And although I'm not going on holiday this year, there is one place I will be visiting and that is the Dynamic Island. And I actually like that name. Let me know in the comments, do you like the name or do you hate it? But anyway, this takes me nicely onto tip number one, how to use the Dynamic Island. So there is a long list of apps and notifications that will pop up in the Dynamic Island. But the real basic ones, the ones you might want to use on day one is the timer, for example. So if we set a timer, three minutes, close it down in the background, and now it's there at the top. Now, let's say we want to play some music while the timer is going. What happens is the timer is then pushed over to the side and that little icon there is actually the album art from the song that I'm playing. It's a gun with a banana peel. And you can see when I go back to this app, the timer goes back into place on the dynamic island. Now, let's say it's like this and I want to skip track real quick. I can hold my finger down on the dynamic island and I get this quick shortcut to skip tracks forward or back airplay or whatever. Now let's close that down just by tapping anywhere. If I wanted to open the music app entirely, just tap it and it opens up Tidal which is running in the background. And then we can just close down and then the timer will take the spot there on the dynamic island again. Now something that I've discovered from day one is Google Maps does not support the dynamic island. All you will get is the notification showing that your location is up here. However, Apple Maps works really, really well. So much so that now Apple Maps is on my home screen instead of Google Maps. And this wasn't an easy decision to make. But allow me to explain and justify why I've made this change here on my home screen. It's because when I'm driving, I like to listen to podcasts on YouTube, usually in the background. So actually, quite often, the map app isn't on display all of the time. And on Google Maps, when you're coming up to a turn, it actually speaks really loudly and it's quite abrupt and it's quite startling and uh, abrasive at times. The great thing about this and the way this works is when you get a notification from the Apple Maps app, you actually see the animation before it starts to speak and that kind of gives you a heads up that it's about to say something and that way it doesn't jump out of your skin every time you're coming up to a turn. I just find it a more relaxing driving experience with this feature so definitely use that because it is awesome and there is a bunch of other dynamic island stuff that involves the airpods and the apple watch and i will be getting those and i will be doing similar tips and tricks videos for those as well so make sure you come back to the channel for those anyway that was tip one keep an eye out do some sightseeing on the dynamic island because there's a lot to learn and a lot to uncover okay tip number two this is another brand new feature on ios 16 devices not just the iphone 14 any device that has iOS 16 will be able to do this. And it's something you should definitely do on day one. That's why it's tip number two. So go to settings, go to wallpapers, and then here you can see we've got the lock screen wallpaper and we've got the home screen wallpaper. Let's start with the lock screen wallpaper because this is the new feature right here. So we can choose our own custom wallpaper or we can use one of the new ones featured here by Apple. And one of the ones that I really like is the moon one. Check this out. So you've got a few different ones. And they kind of move around. And we've seen this kind of thing before on Xiaomi devices, but I really like how Apple have done it because it kind of overlaps the widgets behind them uh, in a way. So I should choose this one for now. So what we have now is actually spaces for widgets. So at the top we've got the date and the phase that the moon is in at the time. And then we've got the space for widgets. This is the key space, this is the golden space. But each of these elements now we can customize. This is far more customization than Apple have ever given us when it comes to the lock screen. So if you tap on that top section there, you can change this to whatever you want. If you just want standard date, for example, you can do that. You can go to the lettering here and change the font entirely. And I quite like this font for this particular background. And then we can change the color of it as well. And then we have a four block space for widgets. So it's entirely up to you how you use this space. So you could put, for example, uh, use two spaces for the phone battery, like that. And if you have AirPods or Apple Watch, you can actually put the battery life with those up there as well. But there's a bunch of things to choose from. You can set the timers up there, put that there. And then one more, let's put the fitness. Cut 
tablet. So use this space however you feel suits your everyday use case. If you're into fitness, then you can put all your fitness stats there. If you're into stocks and shares or whatever you're into, make sure you customize this the correct way. Also, you can use Apple's presets. I'll show you very quickly how you can use your own wallpaper. So go back to the wallpaper menu, go to add new wallpaper. Here at the top which says photos, you can actually add your own background. This is one of my backgrounds from one of my other videos. Check this out, if you swipe across at the bottom, you can actually add different finishes here. And actually something like this, where it's black and white, will use far less power than something that has loads of colors on it because those black areas are off. Okay, now you know how to set up the brand new Always On Display. Here's a new feature involving the Always On Display. So if you double tap the screen to unlock it, make sure your face is in plain view of the screen. What we can now do is hold up and it's down on the Always On Display. And we can add more Always On Displays, which are linked to different focus modes. For example, this one over here is linked to my fire mode. And what I can then do is set up different widgets for fire mode, and then over here, if I hit plus, I can set up a new ambient display for, let's say, sleep mode. For example, this one. Maybe I want to add the alarm clock. Maybe I want to add the battery light for my phone. We go add here, and we can actually make the home screen match as well. So whenever we switch to that mode, the home screen will also switch the wallpaper as well. And at the bottom, we can choose what focus mode we want that to be. So let's say this is personal. And that's it. Now, when we're on this screen, we always on display we can quickly switch between our different focus modes which are going to change the wallpapers on the home screen and on the lock screen and also change the widgets that we have available to us in those different modes so it's just a really good way to use focus mode but also to customize your iphone more than we've ever been able to do before okay tip number four is a brand new customization feature that we didn't have before on ios it's really great if you've got photos or pictures that you want in the background of your phone but you don't want them to be too distracting and also it allows you to kind of create your own wallpaper style for your own phone making the phone more your own so check this out this is a cool new feature you go to settings and you go to wallpaper and now instead of customizing the lock screen which we've already done we want to go to customize home screen so this is the brand new section here at the bottom you've got the original wallpaper if you want we can choose a specific color color and actually really granular type of color we want as the wallpaper at the back or we can add a gradient which is really nice again tap that twice and we can set the gradient to whatever we want essentially what we're doing is creating our own wallpaper here we've got spectrum and also a grid to choose the colors from now this is the cool new feature that i really like so this wallpaper here is something that i've used in the past but one of the problems i had with this is it's a bit busy it's a bit noisy but i like the style so what we can now do you can still add the filters like you did with the always on display. If I tap on the image, I can actually add these filters on top, which is pretty cool. That blue one actually looks pretty nice. But I'm going to leave it as plain because this is what I want to show you. This next blue feature allows us to blur the background out so it's not so distracting, but we still have that kind of feel from the wallpaper that's actually there behind. So if you see that like painting or a picture with a colour scheme that you really like the look of, but you don't necessarily want all of the detail, you just want that kind of theme, you can put that on your phone, turn on the blur feature, and it'll have a nice effect like this. Okay, tip number five, another brand new iOS 16 feature, one that you should be aware of in case you want to use it. So it's the way in which you receive notifications. So you can have count, you can have stack, and we can have list. And stack is actually the new preferred method in my opinion. It just kind of bundles everything together if it's all coming from one source as opposed to a long list of 100 Twitter tweets. That could drive you nuts. This is far better. And something else that I noticed here in iOS 16, which I didn't notice before, is for example, apps like this, Amazon, you can actually allow time sensitive notifications to come through or turn them off. That's not the same on every single app, but on apps like this where shipping is involved, where time sensitive notifications could be key, we'll have this feature. It's entirely up to you how you use that. Okay, tip number seven, and it's another brand new feature. And that's what you guys are here for, the new stuff. So that's what I'm gonna show you. Go to settings, here we wanna go to sounds and haptics, and then here we wanna go to keyboard feedback. Now we can enable haptic feedback on the keyboards. So when you're typing, you will feel 
like you're typing on an actual keyboard which is great because sometimes you might miss a key and then you type a message and then you realize actually you typed the wrong message and that takes me nicely on to another new feature next time you write the wrong message on your iMessage app you can actually undo it but anyway that's not what this tip is this tip is the haptic feedback on the keyboard okay tip number eight is another brand new feature go to settings here go to battery now we can enable battery percentage which means up here in the top right corner we can see exactly down to the single digit how much percentage of battery we have left in the device and if you're wondering why i've switched on airplane mode it's just to remind me how i'm not going on holiday and how i should appreciate this new dynamic island that i now have check out this timer so worth it who wants to go to the caribbean anyway Okay, tip number nine, this is kind of a usability hack that I think a lot of people don't really know about, don't really utilize enough. So check this out, go to settings. Here we want to go to control center. Now control center is what you get here when you swipe down from the top. What you can do is organize this in the correct way just by dragging things up and down. It's probably basic stuff, but it's good to do on day one just so that you know where everything is and it's exactly how you want it to be. But what I want to show you guys is a tool it's very handy sometimes when you're navigating the web. It's this one, text size. So if you add that up here to your control panel, when you swipe down, whenever you're browsing the web and you don't want to pinch in and do all of that kind of stuff to zoom in and read text, actually what you can do is hold the finger down on text size and quickly increase or decrease the size of the text without any pinching or anything like that. All you would do is swipe down from the top right corner, hold your finger down on the text size and then zoom in 135%. Now everything on that page will be increased in size. I do recommend adding this to your control panel. Staying in the same settings window as in settings control panel. Here there is another brand new feature that I want to show you guys. And it's this one. Quick note. So let's add that to the control panel. Let's drag it up near the top. Just like before I swipe down from the top right corner. Now we have Quick note shortcut. The notes app is an incredibly powerful app from Apple, and I will show you guys how to use this more in depth in the near future. But this is just a really great tool for capturing notes, which is then shared across your other Apple devices, whether that's the iPad or the iMac. But though it seems very basic right now, I do recommend you add this to your control panel because trust me, sooner or later you're going to need to write something down very quickly and you don't want to be diving through your app library trying to find your notepad. But literally you can just swipe down from the top right corner, tap on your quick notes here and you're already ready to go. Okay, tip number 11, this is a new feature. Nothing that exciting, but I'm just going to run through some basic stuff that you probably already knew. So swipe down from the top right corner and it you to your control center. Swipe down from the top, brings up your notifications. The great thing about notifications here, it now has your widgets that you have on your lock screen available at the top. So it's just a really great way of using those quickly without having to search for those within settings or within apps and stuff like that. But this is the new feature right down here. See where it says search? That is the spotlight feature, which allows you to search the entire device right here from any of your home screens. So I really like that. And just like before, if you're thinking, well, I like the dots down there that allow me to switch back and forth. If you swipe across, just like you used to, you can still switch quickly back and forth between your home screen. So don't worry about that. This is just a very, very good way of searching your device for anything at all. And it can even be a name of a person and it will actually even uncover photos of that person if it knows who that person is. So as you can see, I typed in my name and it's uncovered a ton of photos with me in it because it knows who I am, uh, as well as emails and messages with my name included. So the Spotlight is a very powerful tool and now it's right here in this little kind of shortcut right on the home screen. If you missed the dots, you could turn it off, but honestly, why would you want to? Thank you for making it this far into the video. And as a reward for staying this far, I'm gonna share with you guys a secret link to my wallpaper stash, which can only be found if you have the direct link. So check this out, it is walkgear.net forward slash wallpapers. Here you'll find most of the wallpapers that I use in my videos. I constantly add to this. One thing you'll notice about my website though, and I apologize for this, is there are quite a lot of Google ads on it. And that's because I've blown all my money on this phone. So you can see right here, there's an ad right here. Did you know 
there is actually a way to block ads from popping up on websites and I'm going to show you this in action right now. So we go to settings, here we go to safari and then here we go to extension. Now we go to more extensions, this opens the Google App Store with verified apps for Safari. Now what we're looking for here is to block. The reason I suggest this one is because it's free. There are other ones, premium ones that cost money, but if like me you've got no money left, <laughs> then you're going to want to use Kablock. So then once you download it, all you need to do is go to settings, safari, back into extensions and now enable Kablock. And now when we load up whatgear.net, you will see the ads are no longer there, which means I no longer make any money off of you for clicking on my website, which is not good for me, but it's good for you guys. And that's why I'm sharing it. I hope you can appreciate my sacrifice. Okay, tip number 13, and this is kind of a double barrel tip. The reason being is because I'm horribly efficient like day one and uh, when you go into your photos gallery and you go to album, if you scroll to the bottom here, there will be a section that says duplicate photo and if you go to that you can delete all of your duplicates but of course I've done that in advance. Okay, I'm only joking, I deleted them by accident and now I can't show you. But there is another trick that I want to show you here in the photos app and it's a very powerful one. So for me, having to cut things out of photos and place them onto other things to create thumbnails is something I do very often. But it also can be great fun to do if you're making memes and this kind of stuff. And now Apple have made this easier than ever. So check this out, this is Chun Li from Street Fighter. If I hold my finger down on the figure, I can actually move this around now and actually paste it into other apps. The app that works the best with this is by far the message app. So let's go to the home screen, keep my finger pinned there with the Chun Li, and let's go to this. You can see I've done this earlier, <laughs> another cut But what this does is it actually sends a PNG file with a clear background to it. Now check this out. Another way we can use this is let's say I cut this character out here like this. If I tap it, I can go to share. Now if I tap share, I can paste this into other apps. Or if I want, I can hit share and save it into my photo gallery. So there's a few ways you can use this. That tool alone is so, so useful. You can just see how she's glowing there. That's just representing the fact that she's cut out of the image right now. If you're wondering who Chun Li is, she's a Street Fighter character. And if you haven't seen the Street Fighter 2 manga, anime, then you have to go and watch that. Because that's a classic one right there. And I don't think it gives a phrase that it's good. Anyway, test out that feature. It's an awesome one. Okay, this is just a bonus one. And it's not a new one, so we'll run through it real quick. But it might be new to you if you've just upgraded. So we go to second, scroll all the way down to where you see the camera. In camera scroll down to where it says photographic styles and here you can change the style of photos that the iPhone takes and funny enough I've actually been testing this iPhone against the iPhone 13 Pro Max today and the photographic styles between the two are different so it's quite interesting to see and I will be making a video about that so make sure you subscribe and notifications on to see the difference but check this out the standard tone is zero zero if you want more contrast it's more sort of like the pixel you can switch to rich contrast style if you like the kind of vibrant colors that you see on a Samsung Galaxy device this is the one you want to use and then we have a more warm style which is what I feel with the previous iPhone was like now it feels more neutral than ever and uh, then we've got an extra cool style again that's kind of leaning more towards the Samsung style of photo so I'm going to leave it on natural from day one but it's good to know about this and how to use this and really just test it out and see which style suits you the best and then leave it on that style. Okay, here's another bonus one. If you go back into settings, go back into camera and what I really want to show you guys here is the full potential that you can unlock if you want to on the iPhone. And that's with regards to the formats that it shoots video in and also the format that it shoots photos in. So within the settings here, you see formats at the top, we can go to high efficiency, which is recommended. Now, if you want to shoot raw, which is this one here, Apple Pro Raw, what you're going to get is the maximum image quality, but the raw image will be unprocessed, so it actually might look worse than your usual JPEG photos or HEIF photos. But when you have raw data, you can use apps like Adobe Lightroom to bring out far more details than you can ever see in a JPEG or a HEIF. So this is a good thing to know about if you're going to do a lot of post process stuff in Photoshop or Lightroom or some other kind of expert 
editing suite. So just keep that in mind. And as you can see right now, I've got it on. And when I go to photo, at the top here, I've actually got some raw symbol, but it's crossed out. So I can actually toggle that on and off. So I do recommend you switch on Pro Raw, but just keep an eye on when you're using it. And if you're never actually ever going to use any editing software or anything like that, you might as well leave it off. And the next thing I want to show you is this, Video Capture Pro Res. Again, so if you're going to be editing in a desktop software, for example, Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, then Pro Res can be very, very good. Again, like the photos, it's going to provide far more data so you can pull the highlights higher, you can drop the shadows darker and have more contrast in the image if you shoot in Pro Res. And if this is all going over your head and this means nothing to you, then there's no point in switching these on. If you're the creative type and you do like to import stuff into a computer, then I'd recommend you switch them on because even when you go back to the camera app, you go to video, we do have the option here to toggle on ProRes and toggle off ProRes whenever we need it or don't need it. So of course, I have bonus content for you guys. I always say bonus content for the people that stay to the end of the video. And this is probably one of the most awesome features within the program. Well, for me, so as you probably know, when you take a photo, you can go to edit and you can adjust the photo for double exposure. You can make it lighter or darker. Let's make it a little bit lighter and you can adjust the brilliance. That's kind of your saturation or vibrance as it's known in some other apps. Then we've got the highlights, we can bring those down, we can the shadow details back. We can the shadows, we can brush, lift, and then we've got a bunch of other stuff we can play around with. This stuff, play around with it if you like fine tune your photo. The cool thing we can do now is actually copy and paste these settings to all of the other photos that we took in exactly the same location. And this could be a massive time saver. So I can copy this thing here, click done. And now I can go to my other photos, same spot, same lighting, different angle. And just go up here, and paste, and edit. Now it's added exactly the same effects that I added to the other photo onto this photo. And if you're wondering what the little brown boxes over there are, those are giveaway prizes for channel members. So if you guys want to sign up for channel membership, there will be more exclusive giveaways in the future. Anyway, use the copy and paste edit thing. It is very useful. Okay, so this is another bonus tip for you guys who have the bigger versions of the iPhones. So the screen is very big and to reach to the top with one hand is very difficult. There is a feature called reachability which isn't enabled at standard and it's very quick to do and it's a good feature to enable with a big screen like this. Go to settings, here you want to go to accessibility and then here we want to go to touch and then here where it says reachability we want to enable that. And if you read what it says, it says swipe down on the bottom edge of the screen to bring the top into reach. So if you swipe down here, you see the whole screen shuffles down. So if you're holding the phone with one hand, you can now reach the top without having to actually reach the top. And who knows, if you guys subscribe, maybe one day I'll reach the top. Or at least get close. Or maybe I'll die trying. But at least I tried, right? <laughs> Okay, here's another bonus tip for you parents out there. It's a very quick one. And it's a way to stop your kids spending money on your phone without you knowing about it. So all you need to do is go to settings, go to screen time, and then here where it says content and privacy restrictions, click on that. And then here where it says iTunes and App Store purchases, if you go to this and go to always require, now no one can buy any stuff without you knowing about it, even if the phone is unlocked. And when you scroll down through this list, you can also add locks to various different things on the device. And if you want to take security up another notch for when other people are using your device, you can always set up screen time for family. That way you can put it into a mode which only gives limited access to what the device is actually capable of. And I heard that actually the iPhone is a hundred thousand times more powerful than the computers that landed man on the moon. Which raises the question, where have we not been back then? I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but uh, it is an interesting question. So here is a final bonus tip for you guys. But watch it all the way to the end. Check this out. When you power down the device, so hold your fingers down or the power and down key, where it says iPhone findable after power off, you can actually turn this off if you want to. 
And the only time you really want to do this is if you want to be completely off the grid. You don't want anybody to know where you are in the world. Let's say you're on a secret mission or something like that. You can actually turn that up. But the reason this is on by default is if someone steals your phone and then immediately powers it down, you can still track these people. Like Liam Neeson in Taken, hunt them down with a particular set of skills, which is Apple Fiber. But I just wanted to show this to you guys because it's kind of hidden within the menu. And maybe some of you are more private people than others, so maybe you might want to turn it off. But my advice to you is don't. And check this out, you can temporarily turn it off if you want, if you want to go off the grid. And here's another tip for you guys. It could be a good idea once in a while to actually turn it off. And on that note, the iPhone 14 has just been announced, so today I want to show you the top tips, tricks, and hidden features that will be available on the iPhone 14 and when you update your phone to iOS 16. All these features will be available as soon as you update your phone to iOS 16 if you don't plan on getting an iPhone 14, but all these are amazing and they're super cool and they're brand new. So let's dive into today's video, the best tips, tricks, and hidden features for the iPhone 14 and iOS 16. One of the coolest new features for the photo app of iOS 16 that I forgot to talk about earlier is the ability to lift a certain subject or picture off in the background and use that and edit that in any way you'd like. This is super cool and I want to show you guys how this is done so let's dive right into it. So let's go to the photos app right here and as you can see I have a picture of my Apple Watch on this vest and say I just want to remove this subject which is the Apple Watch away from the background and all I have to do is just hold down the subject which is the Apple Watch in this case and watch what happens by holding that down. Now the option is to copy or share that specific subject and remove the background completely. So say I want to share this subject, I'm going to just click share right here, I'm going to create a new text message, and now the only the Apple Watch is going to show up in this text message, which I shared, instead of the background being there as well. So this is a brand new feature showing off the intelligence that iOS 16 comes with. It's a very intuitive software, it's pretty amazing, so definitely check that out if you guys want to try this new feature on iOS 16 with your iPhone. Hey Siri! Lumos. The trick that I just showed you all is actually a spell that is used in Harry Potter. So for all those Harry Potter fans, I'm sure that most of you are aware that by casting the spell Lumos with your magic wand, it causes your wand to light up and act as a flashlight, and you can essentially do this with a new update on your iPhone. And to do this, you want to turn on Hey Siri, and then you can activate any of these Harry Potter commands that I'm about to show you, and let's dive right into it. To turn on Hey Siri, you're just going to want to go to your settings right here, and then scroll all the way down till you see Siri in search, and it it's super easy to do, just turn on listen for Hey Siri right here. Now you're going to set it up saying Hey Siri and just click continue right here. Hey Siri. And now that Hey Siri is set up, you can activate it and cast a spell Lumos if you're a Harry Potter fan. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this again just so you got a good understanding of it. So we're just going to click done right here and now let me show you how this works. Hey Siri. Lumos. And just like that, if I turn my phone around, you're going to see my flashlight is on and I can use it for whenever I need it. Now that we have our flashlight turned on using the spell Lumos, if you want to shut it off using a Harry Potter spell, you can actually do that as well. And it's similar to using Lumos, you just have to say, hey Siri, Knox. And just like that, by saying Knox, your flashlight will shut off in a similar fashion to it turned on when you use Lumos with your Harry Potter spell. So this is one other feature with Harry Potter that you can use on your iPhone if you want to turn on and turn off your flashlight. But let's dive into other amazing features on all of your Apple products. The feature I showed you guys at the beginning of this video is a super cool trick that allows you guys to transfer any of your data or information from one of your Apple products to another if they're connected to the same iCloud, and that is called Apple Handoff. So you want to make sure this is set up on your phone. It's super easy to do. I'm going to show you guys how to set that up right now. All you have to do is just go to settings right here, scroll down to general, and then go to Apple Handoff, which you're going to see right here. So if you go to the handoff section, as you can see, I already have that turned on. But basically what this does is it allows you to start something on one device and instantly pick it up on another device when your iClouds are connected. So all you have to do is just make sure this is turned on on your iPhone and then make sure that's turned on to your other Apple product if they're connected to the same iCloud. So turn this on on both of those Apple products and I'm going to show you guys how to set that up and use that Apple handoff on your iPhone. If we want to transfer this content, 
content and the screenshot from your iPhone to your iPad, all you have to do is just move your fingers inwards on that screenshot and just pick that up and then transfer that directly to your iPad like this with this incredible Apple hand. Alternatively, if you think that's too hard of a motion to use with your hands, because I know it can be tricky getting a hang of that, there's an easier way to do this. All you have to do is just also move your fingers inwards on the screenshot like this. And then basically, once that's all set, you can just hold down the paste button right here on your iPad. You're going to see it's going to appear just like that. So this is an easier way to do it. You just click paste instead of having to use your hands with the Apple hand up. This is another way to do it, but it's up to you. You guys can choose your preference on this. But this is a brand new feature for the iPhone and all Apple products that I definitely think was worth checking out and showing you guys. If you have an iPhone, I'm sure all of you use Safari to look up any information and find any information on the internet. But you guys actually have the ability to change where the search bar is on your iPhone. So as you can see, we have it up right here. But after the new iOS 15 update, it actually moved the search bar down here. But I moved it back because I prefer it up here. And I want to show you guys how to do that because I know people vary in opinion on where they like to have their search bar added. So I'm going to show you guys where to add that and how to update that in your settings. Super easy to do. All you do is just go to settings right here. You want to scroll down to Safari right here. Super easy to do. You're going to see this ability in this tab section where it's going to say tab bar or single tab. I have mine on the single tab right now and this means that the search bar is going to be at the top of the Safari app. But if you want it below, you just click this right here. And then we're going to go back to the Safari app and you're going to see that now the search bar is down here. So this is up to you. This is what your preference is. I prefer it up there, but I know a lot of people vary in this idea and opinion. So if you guys want to have your search bar down here, you can gladly do that or you can have it up here. Completely up to you, but this is a feature you guys can access in the settings of your iPhone once you get it. All iPhones have great speakers that allow you to listen to your audio and music very loudly, but I want to show you guys how you guys actually can increase that volume and listen to your music out loud even louder. So I want to show you guys how to do this. It's going to allow you to listen to your music so much louder when you're not using your headphones. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this right now. It's super easy to do. All you want to do is just go to accessibility right here. Then once we get to accessibility, you're going to want to go to audio and visual, which is located right here. And then by clicking that, you're going to see this headphone accommodations tab. So we have that off right now, but if we go to it and just turn it on, you're going to see we have all these options to choose from now. And as you can see, my volume is at moderate, and this is what the standard iPhone comes with. It's going to start with moderate. But if you want to have your speakers listen and have volume much louder through your speakers, you're going to want to turn this to strong. And you guys can actually compare after you watch this video, listening to your music through your speakers at slight, moderate, and strong. And you're going to notice the difference that when you put it on strong, you're going to hear that music so much louder through your speakers, opposed to having it on moderate and slight. And this is definitely something I recommend checking out if you prefer to listen to your music or audio out loud through the speakers, opposed to using a headphone. And you guys, I want you to try the difference after this video, and you guys are going to notice that your headphone accommodations and your music is going to be so much louder once you turn this to strong on the headphone accommodations tab in your settings on your iPhone. So definitely check that out. If you go to the settings app on your iPhone, you're going to see there's tons of features you can activate and turn on by using all these amazing features in the settings app. But I want to talk about one in particular that's going to allow you to use the back of your iPhone to activate gestures depending on what you need. So for this, it is super easy to do and it is super cool. I'm going to show you guys how to set that up. All you have to do is just go to settings. You're going to want to scroll down to accessibility, which is located right here. And then you're going to want to scroll down and click touch. But lastly, we're going to want to scroll all the way down and you're going to see this back tap option. So by clicking this, you're going to see we have an option for double tap and triple tap. For the sake of the video, let's just go to double tap first. And by clicking on double tap, you're going to see we have all these different systems we can choose to activate when using the back of our iPhone. So for example, if we click flashlight, for example, on double tap, what's going to happen is if I turn on my iPhone and double click it right here, you're going to see that the flashlight turns on just by clicking the back of my iPhone, which is super cool and is a great hidden feature that I'm sure you guys would like to know about. So by doing that, just by double tapping the back of my iPhone, you're going to see the flashlight turns on. And then also on top of this, we have tons of other options to choose from, like control center, home, lock screen, notification center, screenshot. So for example, we go to screenshot now. Basically what's going to happen is I'm going to double click the back of my iPhone like this. 
And you're going to see it's going to take a screenshot that's located right here. And this is another feature you can do on your iPhone's back tap setting. And also a great feature about the iPhone is say you spend too much time on one app, like a social media app, and you're reducing your productivity and you're procrastinating a lot. You can actually hide an app from your homepage so you won't be more inclined to go on it. So say you're spending too much time on Facebook, for example, and it could be beneficial for you to spend less time on that app. By holding down Facebook, you're going to have, so you're going to have the option to edit home screen, share app, or remove app. So by clicking remove app, you're going to have two options. It's going to say remove Facebook, and you can even delete the app permanently. And by doing this, it's going to delete from your phone, and you have to remove download on the app store. But if you want, don't want to do that, you can actually just click remove from home screen. So this is going to allow you to be less inclined to go on because you're actually not going to see it on your home screen. So if you want to locate it, if you do need to go back on Facebook, for example, you can find it in your app library instead, which is right here, but you're not going to be able to find it on the home page. If you're still using old-fashioned, slow-charging and messy lightning charging cables, it is time for you to say goodbye to those. Your phone has incredible MagSafe technology built right into it, which allows you to wirelessly and magnetically charge your devices. If you're going to invest so much money into an iPhone, then you should be giving yourself a premium experience, which all starts with something that you need to do every day, and that is charging your actual device. Get the absolute most out of your iPhone with El Gear's 2-in-1 Lightning Charging Stand. This stand allows you to magnetically and wirelessly charge both your iPhone and your AirPods simultaneously. Place your phone anywhere on the sleek charging stand and you're going to feel that magnet automatically attach right to your phone. Elgear wanted to make sure that you can use your phone for all of its uses without having to take it off the stand, which is why they included dual coil technology so you can use your phone both vertically and horizontally in landscape mode. This means that you can still send your messages, emails, or anything else, or you can put your phone sideways and watch your favorite videos and movies while your phone is still being charged in the background. This stand is made with the highest quality materials like metal and tempered glass and they also put non-slip silicone on the bottom of the stand. Elgear used official MagSafe technology so you never need to worry about your phone falling off the stand or having to fidget around with your phone to get it in the right position. As I already mentioned, this is a two-in-one lightning charging stand so you can charge two devices at the same time by using the second wireless charger on the back of the stand. This is perfect for charging a pair of headphones or even a second iPhone. Wait no longer and finally go upgrade your charging experience by going to lgear.com. Stop using those old-fashioned, slow-charging and messy lightning cables and upgrade to the 2-in-1 lightning charging stand that's perfect for your desk or your nightstand and it's also being sold at an incredibly discounted rate. So go to lgear.com. The link's on the screen and down in the description. Enjoy! One of the greatest and new features for iOS 16 is that it allows you to create multiple lock screens and switch between them easily. Apple has created tons of new lock screens with widgets, weather, and different displays that are all very unique in their own style. I want to show you guys how to set this up so you can have multiple lock screens going on at once and you can choose between them with these. So it's super easy to do. If you want to create or edit a new lock screen, all you have to do is just hold down on a lock screen like this. It's going to zoom out and you have multiple options to choose between new lock screens. So for example, if we want to click add new right here, we just click that and as you can see Apple created tons of new wallpapers for your lock screen we have anywhere from feature to weather and astronomy we have emoji ones down here we have a new collection down here tons of different ones to choose from so say for example you guys want to have the weather on your lock screen so you can see it at all times so you can know what it's like outside before you go out we can just click weather and astronomy right here and you guys can edit that to make sure you guys can customize that to your needs then we're going to click done right here and as you guys can see this is my new lock screen right here so this is one of the many lock screens you guys can choose from as you can see it even shows when the sunset's going to occur and if we go back to this and i want to show you guys another one right now we have the option to customize this one we can click done and then we can go even create another lock screen you can have as many as you want on your lock screen so you guys can switch between them with ease if we go back say we want to do an emoji one we can click this right here and as you can see we have the fish emojis in the background of my lock screen so depending on what you want you guys can choose between all the lock screens that you have and you guys can choose which one you want for the day or the hour or whatever that may be so i want to go back to weather and keep that on and i'll have this throughout the day but if i want to edit this i can just hold this down and choose from other lock screens i've created or customize new ones so this is a brand new feature for ios 16 i definitely recommend using it if you guys want to have 
multiple wallpapers going on at once. This allows you to switch between them with ease and choose new ones as you move forward with iOS 16. So definitely check out this feature if you guys want to edit and customize your own lock screens on your iPhone. So if we hold down the iPhone right here, the lock screen, you're going to see we have this option to click Customize. And by doing so, we can remove certain widgets. So if I click right here, and for example, say I want to get rid of the AQI because I feel like it's not a necessary piece of data we need on our lock screen. I can click Minus right here, and I'll remove that. Then we can add the battery percentage if we want, and that'll show how much battery is left on my phone. Before you enter my phone, it'll be right there on the lock screen. We also have tons of other widgets you guys can add. You can add the calendar, clock, fitness, home. All these options, essentially any information or widget you want to add to the lock screen, you can do so. Just make sure you remove certain ones before doing so, so you guys can have those featured on your lock screen. Because like I said, AQI, I felt like that wasn't an important piece of information I needed. So if you guys want to remove certain ones, just click the minus button, and you can add any widgets you'd like on your home screen. And you can do this with any of the lock screens that you create, and you can choose between those with ease, so you can see all the widgets and important information you need right at your fingertips before I entering into your iPhone. And like I said, this is an incredible new feature for iOS 16. So if you guys want to have widgets on your lock screen or customize them in any way you want, you can do that with iOS 16. It's super cool and I definitely recommend checking that out as soon as you have iOS 16 installed on your iPhone. Arguably the greatest new feature for iOS 16 is all the great things you can do with the messaging app. They're all incredible and the main feature I want to show you guys is how to undo or edit text messages after you send them. It's a brand new feature I think they should have done a long time ago and I'm very glad they got this done. It's about time. So I want to show you guys how this works and all the great new features that come with iOS 16 and the messaging app on your iPhone. So let's dive right into it. So as you can see, I created a new message and before I send it, this is the feature I want to talk to you guys about this is the ability to undo messages or edit them after you send them and it's a brand new feature I want to show you guys it's super cool so let's dive into it and I'm going to show you guys how this is done so say for example I want to just text this hi right here basically what's going to happen is I'm going to click hi and then I'm going to hold down that message right after it's sent and then you're going to see I have the option to undo the send or edit the send so if I want to undo the send all I have to do is just click undo and now that's going to be disappeared from that contact and that text message. So say I type hi again right here, send that like this. Now I'm going to hold down that hi again right here and we're going to have the option to edit that message. So we're going to click hi and edit that message. I'm going to say hi, how are you? So instead of saying hi, I'm going to type this instead because I just edited that message. This is a brand new feature for iOS 16 that I think is super cool. It allows you to fix any text messages you wanted to fix before sending them because we never had that privilege beforehand. So if you guys need to edit a message or unsend a message, you guys can do that now with iOS 16. I definitely recommend doing it because it is a great tool for future text messages. Another great new feature for the messaging app with iOS 16 is you actually have the ability now to scan certain texts from your photos and that will translate into a text message directly from that photo. I think this is a super cool feature I want to show you guys and it's super easy to do. So let me show you guys how this is done. So for example, as you can see, we're in my new message right here. We're just going to hold down on this text box right here and you guys are going to see we have the option to scan a text message right here. So if we click that, it's going to take us to our photos right here or our camera. And say for example, I want to scan a text of this perfume bottle right here. All I have to do is just place this in front of the camera like this. And as you guys can see, it's a bit blurry, but I'm going to pick that up, and now it's going to translate right into that text message and say Tom Ford and the name of the perfume, and that's a simple example of how you guys can scan a text and convert that right into a text message, and then you guys can send that to whoever you want. This is a brand new feature for iOS 16. Like I said, iOS 16 has a ton of new features for the text messaging and iMessage on your iPhone, so these are all some features I definitely think you guys should check out when you get the chance. These are all incredible and definitely super cool, so feel free to try those out when you guys get the chance and update your phone to iOS 16. I want to take a quick break from the video to introduce to you guys Rakuten, the best app to get cash back and other great deals. With Rakuten, you're going to be able to shop at stores you love and earn great rewards and other great deals just by using this app. And also with our exclusive link with Rakuten, you're going to be able to earn an additional $30 just by using it. So I'm going to show you guys how to access that link and earn your free $30 right now. Claim your free $30 from Rakuten using this exclusive link. All you want to do is just go to Safari or any web browser you have and type in bit.ly slash get ebates bonus. That is bit.ly slash get ebates bonus. Now that's in the link in the description as well of this video. And it's on the screen right here. So make sure to check those out to find it. 
at the end of this video, but this link is exclusive to AppBind, so you only can get just $30 from using this link, so we need to make sure to get you guys the best rewards possible through this partnership, and you guys are also supporting our channel by doing this, so I want to thank you guys for that. But let's click on the link right here, it'll be in the description like I said, and it's going to take you to this page, and it's going to say all of you guys can get $30. Once you join, you spend thirty dollars. So all you have to do is just create an account on Rakuten, which is completely free, no charges or costs involved. And once you spend that thirty dollars on Rakuten, you're going to get a free additional thirty dollars on top of that. So it's a win-win because you're going to get free thirty dollars, and you're going to be able to get cash back while shopping at your favorite stores. So all you have to do is just put in your email and create a password, and then you are good to go with this exclusive link with Rakuten. For using our exclusive link, I want to show you guys the Rakuten app. It is right here. It is super easy to use and navigate. It has up to 3,500 plus stores where you can earn cash back and other great rewards. So odds are that if there's 3,500 plus stores, one of these are going to be your favorite stores to shop at. So you're losing money if you essentially do not download this app and use our exclusive link to get that extra $30. But as you can see, there's tons of different sections to choose from. Stars are members of love. For example, we've got Macy's and Walmart. At Macy's, you can earn 10% cash back. Other great deals in the category section. So if you have a specific category you want to look into for sports and goods or health and beauty or any of these, you can gladly go to do that on this category section. But if we click on sports and outdoors, for example, we're going to see Lululemon, Athleta, Adidas, all these other stores right here where you can earn cash back. We're going to click on Lululemon. It's going to show you the 2% cash back right here and more information. It's going to tell you when it expires. It's going to show you these top coupons. And this is just one of the categories of many. Anything you want to shop, essentially, Rakuten will have that. So you guys definitely got to download this app. You're losing out on money if you aren't using Rakuten. And think, keep in mind that you're also going to get an additional $30. So you're overall saving tons of money by using our exclusive link and using Rakuten in general. And do not miss out on this opportunity, guys. Enjoy. If you have your phone updated to iOS 16, what you can actually do is add a widget on your home screen that will show you the battery percentage of your AirPods at the moment. So this is only if you have iOS 16. We've created tons of videos on iOS 16. If you want to get early access, just check one of those out. But if you want to edit your home screen to see your battery percentage for your AirPods, all you have to do is hold this down right here, click customize. And then now if we click on this widget section right here, you're going to see we have this option to choose the battery percentage of our AirPods. So whenever you look at your phone, your home screen, you're going to see the battery percentage of your AirPods and how much charging you have left or how much you need to charge them to have them fully charged ready to use. So I'm going to add this right here and now I have four widgets on my home screen and one of those will be my AirPods battery percentage. So make sure to update your phone to iOS 16, check out our previous videos if you want to do this so you can have your battery percentage of your AirPods connected right on the home screen of your iPhone. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. These are the top hidden features for the iPhone 14 and iOS 16. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button for more great content like this. I also encourage you guys to go to appfindvip.com and subscribe to our email newsletter to get the best mobile apps and games delivered directly to your email inbox. And while you're at it, go give us a follow at appfindvip, where we're going to be sharing the best tips, tricks, and hidden features on iOS 16, iPhone 14, and all Android and Apple products out there. So definitely check these links out when you guys get the chance. They're going to be in the description of this video. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.